Hi, my name is Josh from GFR Film and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to convert your digital camera into an infrared camera that can take pictures like this. Now I'm going to be doing this on a Panasonic FS35 but it will also work on a range of cameras from the early to mid 2010s. The first thing you're going to want to do is to remove the battery and set it aside and then using a cross point screwdriver there are five screws on the back of the camera that will need removing. You can then pry off the back of the camera to reveal some of the circuit. Now I have done this modification on a number of cameras now after being inspired by David from Two Stops Over on Instagram. I'll tag their link down in the description. While I've got the camera dismantled, I'm taking the opportunity to remove any dust or dirt that's accumulated over the years. So I'm just using a cotton bud with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Next up, we're going to need to remove the screen, which is just held in place by one screw. Now you've got to be careful when removing this because it is connected via a flex circuit. If this circuit breaks or gets a tear in it, then that can be the end of your camera. There's just one more plate to remove now, which is held in place by four screws. Three which are visible on the back and then on the side under the front cover, there is another screw. Once this plate has been removed, you'll have access to where the camera's sensor is. The back of the sensor is held in place by three screws and is connected to a flex circuit. So again, you're gonna to have to be careful when moving it not to damage anything. This is also a good opportunity to remove any dust that might be on or around the sensor that might be showing up in your images. So as you can see, I'm just using a rocket blower to remove any dust in the area. You can now see I'm using a small tool just to pry off the sensor from the main camera body. It was kept in place by a seal that was a little bit sticky, which was just keeping it in place. Using a pair of tweezers, we're going to remove both the infrared filter and the seal that surrounds it. So this is what the infrared filter actually looks like. It's just a small bit of plastic, you can see it's a little bit reflective. That we can now discard and then put the seal back in place and reassemble the camera in reverse order. See, again, I'm just blowing any dust that might be sitting on the sensor before putting it back together. If you don't have a repair mat like I do, it might be worth keeping screws in an ice cube tray or small containers just so you know exactly where they go. Now, in order to take infrared images, we need to make sure we're blocking out all visible light and just leaving the infrared light. To do this, we're going to have to attach an infrared filter which blocks this light out. Attaching this to the camera could be difficult, but what we're going to use is a 3D printed filter mount that was created by Two Stops Over. This is what the filter mount looks like. You can then buy an infrared filter from somewhere like AliExpress, like this one. But I decide instead that I'm going to use a Hoyer R72 filter, uh, which I would usually use on my film camera. So you can see it's, uh, it's a slightly different size to the 3D printed mount. So I'm just going to use one of these conversion filters. So this, I believe, takes it from uh, 52 millimeters to 58 millimeters. Now I was just going to use double sided tape to keep it in place, but I decided in the end to use some glue. So I'm using a Gorilla Glue clear adhesive and just applying a thin layer to the edge of the uh, front face of the lens. You've got to be careful to make sure you don't get any glue on the lens covers because you don't want them sticking closed. To ensure it sticks properly, we're just going to let it to dry for a couple of minutes before placing the filter mount on top. The last thing that you'll need to do is screw on your infrared filter and set the camera to black and white and then you'll be ready to take pictures. I'll just let the rest of the video play out with some images that I took in Innsbruck. I hope you enjoyed the video and you feel inspired to do some infrared photography yourself.